Hey, what's up? It's Sadeja, aka So Anxious. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I developed this tiny home over here in Revit. And I just want to give a disclaimer. This is not a tutorial. Um, <laughs> this is kind of just a recording of me developing this space as it happened. And so a lot of the developments weren't planned. And there is somewhat back and forth of the actual um, process in which I got to this final result here and so bear with me at <laughs> some parts because I'm gonna be honest with this um, voice faceover of what I'm doing right now like bruh <laughs> you do not need to do all of that or that's not gonna be there at the end like <laughs> if you can follow what I'm saying so, um, again, yes, this video is just going to be walking you through how I made this happen. Um, and remember, this is something that I wanted to make a series out of. So there will be more videos on building tiny homes digitally. Because I think tiny homes is something that is very intriguing in concept. You know, knowing what you want and understanding what you need and how to combine the two. And a smaller space, how to optimize that space so that you're able to live comfortably. I think knowing how to design in a tiny home, trailer size type of cubicle area is the best way to really test your design skills in general so yeah there definitely will be more videos dedicated to tiny homes but let's get started with this one so I laid down a 25 by 9 foot floor and that's just where I'm starting off as the base and then I'm going to dedicate the different levels of the tiny home vertically so yeah, this is a process that I didn't necessarily need to take. Um, I have been trying to play with creating structural framings and systems on Revit because, you know, in the average professional environment, they're not just laying down walls. They're actually um, putting together a system of beams and columns so that you're kind of developing the skeleton of the building before you actually put the finishings on top so for some reason I thought that four columns on each corner of the, <laughs> of the design was necessary it wasn't at least not with this process it would have been different if I included beams and columns and connected the columns to something but they just stood there I think that they were necessary in the sense of creating that ground to bottom floor aspect um, that tiny homes have. It's usually lifted off of the ground, but to bring it up throughout the whole home wasn't necessary. So now I'm moving on to the actual loft space and I dedicated a level to loft and so just go on that level and um, start to etch out that shape. I decided that that loft space would be best to be around six and a half to eight feet so that I could fit a bed and some other things that you'll see later on into that area. So I go from the loft view back onto level one to dedicate bathroom area. And instead of laying down a floor, cause I already have a floor in level one, I put down the wall. And now you can see what that looks like in section. So I knew that I wanted a closet space and I just etched out kind of like a room on the bottom floor next to the bathroom and this would be dedicated to laundry as well as any cleaning supplies but before I put anything in these spaces what I'm gonna do is actually import some doors so that I'm able to see how much space is truly left over in those corners say if I put in a swinging door and it swung outward about probably three feet because the average door across is three feet so I just wanted to measure out that space. Like I said, this wasn't planned. It was just done. So if I'm going to do it, I'm definitely going to kind of check behind me and make sure that it's at least livable. <laughs> so from here, I'm going to go to the other side of the home and create a model in place, which is going to stand as a step. Not only that leads you to the bedroom 
on one side of the house but the kitchen on the other and then it lifts up the space my intentions were to have a system for storage where the kitchen is lofted up but I did not implement that in this video but if you guys would like to see what those store with those spaces will look like opened and utilized I can make another video with that but as of now it's just a block in which in my opinion will hold dining room tables maybe chairs that you'll bring out for your guests and things of those sort so here is where I actually put in the contents of that closet that I had before and I do this now you know a lot of the actual makeup and the spatial entities of the building aren't together yet but I put in the washing machine slash dry because I wanted to know how much space I really needed for that closet and then how much space is going to be left over I didn't want to just guess the whole time and create the whole house and be like well this closet needed to be two times as deep or it could have been skinnier so that's why I did that here if you're just going on a whim with your designing digitally I suggest you just put in furniture that already exists on Revit and see how much space those furnitures take up because usually those are accurate sizes so now I'm working on the staircase and that is also going to be a model in place most of this stuff is going to be a model in place because I did make it from scratch. I didn't really download much when it came to the design of this tiny home. I think I may have imported maybe five items. Most of the items in this house, most of the makeup of this house is built from models in place from just basic three-dimensional shapes and cutting and angling them so that they look like real life furniture so what I have done in a lot of my videos that I did not do here is actually identify the face of each step in which I wanted the next step to proceed from so instead I just had them come from basically the same starting point as you can see on the left, the dimensions are chosen so each stair should be the same height. So if I would have chose it from the surface of the bottom stair, then it would have stepped up. But because I kind of had them on the same beginning point, it went across. And it's easy to just extrude the shapes, but so that you get a better, more calculated result, you should always select the face. The exact face of which you want the object to protrude from. So from here we're going to start on developing some storage for the tiny home. Which is really exciting for those that are interested in the topic of tiny homes. Because storage is a necessity. And it's always fun to see where you can put it. Sorry, it's fruit flies in my house. So what I'm going to do now is again start another um, system of models in place. I like to create a bunch of light characters within the same model so that they act in the same way. Because you could do each and then check mark it and then go on to the next one. But I mean that's going to be a lot to deal with. So I laid down the drawers on the face surface of the stairs. And I played with the knobs a little bit as far as size. And once I got the perfect size, I then transformed that to all of the different um, spaces and storage. Honestly, you could put anything in this drawer. It depends on what you would like to do. Maybe it's, you know, um, exterior clothing such as coats or game boards anything that you will like anything that will be stuffed in the corner somewhere if you're trying to live in a smaller space so once i do the drawers i'm actually going to create another drawer as well as two closets that will hopefully stand for um you know closet space as well that will hopefully stand for storage space as well if a closet is to be better utilized than in drawer so, options. 
So now I'm going to go on the lofted level so that I can kind of figure out what I'm going to do as far as storage on the second level where the bedroom is. And the best way to understand how you're going to set up the wall system so that it matches the other levels is to change the visibility of that floor plan and to do so you just click VR on your keyboard and it pulls up a menu and you can select what's viewable in that floor plan. Once I do this the floor under is visible so just take that into consideration that all of these walls are not lining with each other. This is what it looks like in section. Flies. Fly the fly man. Now I'm creating a floor because at first I wanted this square balcony but then I realized that usually in family rooms there is a ceiling above to put a light in and I thought why not have that ceiling for the first level and make that into some type of storage space for the lofted area. So once I do this I put the walls down to create a closet. Wish I could just like slap flies, but I can't. Sorry if it scared y'all. Okay, so I'm just taking the perspective to really get a feel for the space and if it is something that's livable, especially for what I plan to be the chillax area. So it looks pretty alright to me. And I noticed actually how high the door is now. You get to choose um, set, you have set options for the dimensions of the door and I suppose I chose 8 feet. So what I'm going to do is choose 6 feet and in doing that I realized that the floor for the main part of the lofted bedroom area was a foot lower than I expected it to be. So I, uh, instead of making the building 14 feet high, and I know that's probably going to dismay a lot of the connections, the wall connections I have, I actually pulled the floor down a little bit because once you set something on a floor, it's going to follow that floor. So I put the floor down by a foot. So now it's going to be just more livable space, 6 feet on the bottom floor and probably about 7 feet on the top floor, which I'm not mad at. Yeah, so now I'm just trying to adjust the floor and wall connection as well as make the stairs a little bit more cohesive in getting to that top level. So there are a couple more stairs behind where that wall is. So a lot of the kitchen did not get recorded, but all I did was create a model in place, which you guys have seen me done so many times before, and I screwed that up to about four feet and made that kind of like the countertop and made that the countertop for our kitchen. And once doing that, I imported a refrigerator, stove top, as well as a sink Top. So what I am going to show you guys is how I made the cabinets on that back wall of the kitchen because I feel that it really helped the aesthetics overall. Making more tiny homes in the future, I will take into consideration you don't have to have a full size refrigerator. Having like this L-shaped kitchen, that's not really necessary in most tiny homes so I will play with you know minimizing the kitchen area next time but I was pretty pleased with the aesthetic in this one so once I actually create those basic cabinet shapes what I'm gonna do is add doors to them so that it's a little bit more lifelike because you can open cabinets <laughs> so yeah this is just the process of me laying down shapes onto the surface of the base of the cabinets and then extruding them out very little so that it's an indent but not something that just sticks out in your face kind of exactly exactly like what I did for the storage on the stairs
I mean, plan to be way more dramatic than necessary. <laughs> Woo. So after I get all of that done, I realized that there is a lot of just drawer storage around and there will be more implemented, but I wanted something unique in a kitchen that I've seen before and that is the dish storage so like the pots and pans and baking plates usually go under the stove so there is like the shelving system that is behind a glass door and I thought that I would recreate that here it, this is what it looks like overall I'm feeling it I hope you guys are too. I know that half of it was already done when we came, but I basically showed you how that was possible for me. <laughs> now I'm going to put down the handles. Just these little details that you don't know make a difference, really makes a difference, and it doesn't take that much to add them on. So same process just on a smaller scale so yeah we're gonna get these to be as small as possible you know zoom in and get the air and get that arrow as close to those cabinets as humanly possible but so they're not you know tucked behind the cabinets they're still present you know I'm still here so once we get past that, we come on to developing the roof. This took a minute. <laughs> this took a minute. You will see how the geometry of the roof just changes throughout this two-part video. I'm definitely going to make this into a two-part video. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs>